Awesome. Well, Roger, why don't you get back to it at the Capitol? And we will have Nolly and Susan from Falgren Mortine take it away and give you some updates on the projects we've been working on. Thanks, Brenna. Thank you. Thanks, Roger. Excellent. Um, I'm tr trying to start my video, but there we go. Here we go. Hi. Hello, all. It's nice to it's nice to see you. I'm going to share my screen right now. There we go. Can everybody see that? <laughs> Excellent. So I'm Nolly Haas. I'm with Falgren Mortine. We are the agency who does the PR and marketing for the Idaho Wine Commission. I am presenting with my colleague, Susan Bruns, who will be after me talking about um, the Wine Folly Region Guide in a little while. This is our eighth year working with the Idaho Wine Commission, and we are really proud of the work we do and excited to work with this team. We competed for a national RFP this past fall and won this work again. So I wanted to share with you some of the things we've been working over on over the past year. And then um, we'll talk about our team, the way that we are funded and what that does. I wanted to give you a brief overall. We're going to walk out a teeny tiny bit for 10 seconds on um, communications and the PESO model of integrated communications and how that works and what we do with that. And then also the projects that we're working on again, that we've worked on in the past and that we'll be working on uh, moving forward. So this is our team. We kind of joke that this is um, our Brady Bunch picture that we have. You can see the Idaho Wines team in the middle right here. And then there are seven or eight of us who then work on all these projects together to help build that awareness for Idaho Wines and do all the different things that we do from social media to media relations to um, advertising, all the different aspects of it. Um, so overall, the PESO model of communications. So what that is, is PESO stands for paid, earned, shared, and owned. And we have our fingers in all of those different parts of it. So paid media, what that is, is it's the social media ads. It's the boosted content that we do to help build that awareness and bring it to greater um, audiences. When we put paid dollars behind it, we can just increase that reach. Earned media is what you often think about as traditional media relations, where we're building relationships with journalists and bringing them into town and hosting them and having them experience Idaho wines with the goal of them writing about it. Um, the shared media, it's social media that we create, our strategy behind that. Um, and then also the community building with user-generated content or giveaways that we do, you know, that then people interact with Idaho wines. And then owned media, we, that's the emails that we create that then get sent out to the consumer email list. And also the, it's the website that we helped create, you know, we own that. Uh, it's also the, uh, the blog content that we write that then lives on the Idaho wines website that then people can use to learn about Idaho wines. And then it helps establish Idaho wines as the authority and an authentic, you know, trusted source to come to learn about that. Um, oops, here we go. Sorry. Next. Oops. So here are some of the projects that we did in 2023 that we're going to go into depth a little bit more. We'll start with the brand evolution. So Idaho Wine Commission had had their old branding for a little while, and we felt like we wanted a new refresh of how to really tell the story and capture the feeling and the spirit of Idaho wines about, you know, that some people might not learn about it, that it's a really welcoming, open community that people want to join and be a part of and discover. So you can see that new branding is kind of fun and playful. And here's some of the um, advertising that we created to go with that. You'll see this new branding on the collateral that we're going to be creating throughout the year. And you've probably seen it last year as well, but helping just convey that spirit of excitement, of, um, of community, and all that's happening to move Idaho wines forward into the future. Along with that branding, we did a website redesign. Our team, we have a creative team that we work in conjunction with as well at Falgren Mortine, who are incredible professionals who do this work. So that website was worked on for about six months last year, and then we launched it mid-September with new features that really help um, consumers learn more about Idaho wines and then hopefully drive tourism as well, because that's such a big piece of um of what we want people to do is come experience as well. So there are the new interactive maps showing all the wine regions. 
there are enhanced event listings that are showing what's going on so that people can really um, just take a take a glance and say, hey, I want to come be a part of this thing. So for this website design, you can see a little bit more in depth, you know, you can see people will be able to see, okay, here's the wine region and here are all the wineries that are part of it. And so they can kind of plan on the map where they can go and what they can do. We also have some itineraries on the um, website now too, where it's like, you want to plan a weekend here? This is what you can do. In addition to doing the wineries, here's where you could stay. Here's where you can, we want it to be as easy as possible for people to really come and experience that, the Idaho wine regions. Another project we worked on was getting updated photography throughout the state. So we use this to not only tell the story visually on the website, people really, you know, I mean, look at all these beautiful images from all your different um, wineries and tasting rooms that people will get excited to come visit. These are the images we share with the media that then, you know, they can use to promote it as well. And then um, we did winter wine weekends. So that was our initial our inaugural year was 2023 doing that. We're working on it this year as well. Again, we had 17 wineries and cideries participate. And we the goal of the whole event was to drive um, drive people to tasting rooms during that shoulder season when it's not quite as busy. So we did themed weekends and wineries then chose what they wanted to do based on that uh, theme that they could then use to promote on their own social media. So we did a lot of promotion in a variety of ways. So we did earned media. You can see we had a number of impressions with earned media placements. We did radio advertising. We did a wine event, tasting event at Bogus where we had three wineries come up and offer tastings to the skiers who were there just to, as a way we thought to come to people where they are in the winter. So then perhaps afterwards they would think, hey, this is where I wanna come visit on a different weekend. I wanna go to a tasting room. And that was very successful. We had great feedback from the wineries last year and have also had good feedback so far this year. So we're excited that that was a project we got to do. You can see some of the imagery that the that you shared with us. So it's soups being made, it's comfort foods, it's charcuterie boards, it's all the beautiful desserts that happen. I know that's a really popular weekend that people love. Uh, we heard great things about the, the bark at Rolling Hills and you know people just, and all the, the Merlot sauce at different places. So anyway, you guys have done a really great job at promoting those things and we appreciate your partnership on the Winter Wine Weekends. We also have a national media relations program that we are always doing where we are reaching out to not only wine media, but to tourism-based media and to um, like culinary media to help establish Idaho wines as a place where people want to be and insert ourselves into that national conversation of what's happening you can see a number of the clippings that we got from a variety of different places from around uh, the country. We also do a regional media relations program. So as many of you know, we have so many new people that have moved to Idaho that not all of them are aware that Idaho wines exist. So how do we help tell that story to our local people and our regional people throughout the state? That, that this is an opportunity for them. So we have these stories that you can see from Magic Valley about what's happening, not only industry-wide, but more, there more locally, about Harvest, about the new website. So we really are trying to build relationships with people throughout the region and throughout the country to help tell the story of Idaho wines. We did a virtual media mission last year as well. So not everyone, not every journalist has time to come or... Um, some people weren't traveling quite, quite as much because of the effects, the lingering effects of the pandemic. So we did one where we sent, we had eight participating winemakers. We sent wine to the different journalists, the 10 media that we had participating. And then we did over Zoom, a guided tasting. The winemakers got to share the, their own stories and what's happening and build excitement there. We even had a wine business monthly journalist who came to Saber Idaho last year as a result of that and wrote a piece of it. And we're still working again with those outlets that you can see listed here to then come and market and continue to get stories placed. Not only did we do a virtual media mission, but we did two in-person media missions last fall, one to Seattle and one to LA. We partnered with Visit Boise and Visit Idaho in Seattle and with just with Visit Boise in LA, you can see the invitation we sent to the wineries that 
looked similar to the Saber Idaho poster that we did that we thought was really beautiful and kind of helped, you know, convey the spirit of what Idaho Wines is. You can see in the on the right hand side, these are some of the publications that we interacted with as a result of those media missions. And here you'll recognize some familiar faces here. Um, Moya, who went to both, and then James, who was at the Seattle Media Mission, help, helping tell the Idaho wine story and representing you all very well in the work that they do. As I mentioned, we have an organic social media program that we have planned posts every month. Some of the most popular ones that we found are the winery spotlights. People love to learn about what you are doing, the great work that you're doing in your wineries. You can see that we had a number of Facebook and Instagram followers that we gained over the past year, which is great because we're getting more advocates and people interested in Idaho wines, just building that awareness always just through the different mediums like we talked about. It takes a lot of different ways to help gain people's attention, and this is one of the important ways that we're doing that. We also use social media um, paid advertising through that because, again, it helps just reach, boost that reach. We did, you can see a number of those. So there's um, so Saver, Adver Saver Idaho, there's a cider-based one, there's a tourism-based one, come to Idaho, those calls to action to come do this, click here, visit now, you know, buy your tickets today. That's Those are the things that we're encouraging people to do. As far as advertising goes, much of our advertising is uh, local and regional because that's where um, most of our audiences are. So it'd be like fly markets, people coming to Saber Idaho or drive markets or just the people here in Idaho that we're trying to reach. We do have some, some national advertising as well that we do. One of those is the Wine Folly Project that we're working on that Susan will be talking about later, but the majority I would say is local and regional advertising. So for Saber Idaho, we helped work to promote that, to not only promote ticket sales, you can see at the bottom some of the places that we placed advertisements to help build awareness and get people to learn more about it. We designed, again, the new collateral for that, as well as posters, bottleneckers, things that would just people would notice, and then we want them to come, you know, come to Saber. And we had a great turnout last year, as you all know, I attended the event and it was really fun to see all the great things you guys are doing in person and the excitement and the enthusiasm that people had for that. We also had a fun project that we only did it last year, but we worked with the Northwest Cider Association to promote Idaho cider industry. And it worked out really well because it was timing wise in conjunction with not only the Northwest Cider Cup in June, but the annual the first annual Idaho Cider Fest in October. So that was a great jumping off point for us to do media relations. As you can see, we got coverage in all the major Boise publications that talked about the Cider Fest and the, what's been happening in the industry. And then the Idaho Farm Bureau wrote a more in-depth piece about the industry overall, in addition to having one of their reporters come to the Cider Fest to help tell the story of that. So we're continuing to work on Winter Wine Weekends for this year. We got the data from 2022 of the economic impact that the wine industry has had on our state. So we just created a new, using the new branding, a new fact sheet to tell that story. What are the new numbers of the number of wineries? And, you know, what's the, how many people are working in the industry? Susan, like I mentioned, is going to talk about the Wine Folly Region Guide and how you can participate in that. We're going to be doing some new video series. We're working with Albertsons for Wine and Cider Month, a grocery store activation in select um, Albertsons. They're going to be featuring Idaho wines so that people will notice them and buy them even more, as well as working with national journalists to bring them into town. We're redoing the Wine and Cider Guide to have it have the new branding. There's um, in the works planning for a media mission in 2024 to New York. So um, Moyle, Moyle will be heading there on your behalf. And the new branded items that you'll see with the new branding at the different events that we'll be doing so we've got a lot on our plate, a lot we've been doing. We love this work and we really appreciate your partnership and support as we continue to do that and work on your behalf. And I will turn my time over to Susan now. Thanks, Nolly. Uh, real quick, does anyone have any questions for Nolly before she runs away from us? <laughs> and if you think uh -huh. of them after Susan's, I can answer, we can answer them there as well. Okay, perfect. Uh, what percentage advertising dollar in state versus out of state? That's a great question. Um, I don't have the exact figures on hand, but I would say 
uh, we would split it more into local and regional. So like we would say probably about two thirds, three quarters to two thirds is local and regional advertising versus about a quarter is national advertising. Thank you. And then can you post or send the last slide of current and upcoming projects? Yes, we can, Lauren. All right, Susan, do you want to take it away? You bet. Okay. All right. And I'm hoping that you can see the screen. All right. Um, as Nelly said, my name is Susan Bruns, and I have the privilege of working with her and all of the um, Idaho Wine Commission staff on this account. And one of the big projects we're very excited about for 2024 is an Idaho region guide on winefolly.com. And uh, as you can see from this page, Idaho is in some excellent company, um, both with well-known wine regions in the United States, but also across the world. And so we're excited, very excited to get um, to have this opportunity. And what I'm going to talk to you about uh, for just a few minutes is how, um, is how Idaho wineries can take full advantage of being part of the Idaho Region Guide on Wine Folly. So one of the benefits of Idaho having a region guide is that every Idaho winery has a winery profile as part of the guide. And you can call it a profile or a microsite, but it's 100% free and it will exist for as long as wine folly exists. And uh, our goal today is to tell you how you can claim your profile or your microsite and be ready for when the Idaho Region Guide launches, which is scheduled for June 1st. Um, and the timing is very deliberate to take advantage of Idaho Wine Insider Month. I'm sure you're all familiar with Wine Folly, but just a few statistics um, about the site. It reaches over 20 million people a year. It has a, it's large, a large following in North America, but also in emerging markets and in Europe. Um, what's especially exciting about Wine Folly is that its largest audience is millennials and Gen Z. And as, just, as I'm sure you also know, it's very focused on wine education. So it is creating um, a new generation or new generations of wine drinkers and wine lovers um, and wine enthusiasts. And um, you'll see that in the past when they've launched some guides, you'll see that they've got some very impressive social media followers, followings, um, as well as a very large email list. And so when the Idaho Wine Guide launches in on June 1st, um, past guides have had over 5 million um, people see that launch. So um, that's why we're encouraging you to get your uh, site ready in advance of Idaho's launch. So on your profile or your microsite, these are the basic. In, this is the basic information that you'll be asked to share, and I'm guessing that uh, most of you already have have this on your websites. Um, the one thing you may or may not have on your website is details of all your current wines and vintages and bottle photography. So we'll talk a, about that. To claim your profile for uh, Wine Folly, it's four steps. I'll walk you through each of them in, in these slides. But um, right now, uh, today, you can claim your profile. And, um, and this is what it looks like. Uh, we'll send this link as after the meeting. And when you, when you go to that link, this is the site you'll be taken to. I'll make this just a little bit bigger, or maybe it's easier if you make it larger on your screen. But you're asked for basic information, a contact person um, that they can get in touch with if they have questions uh, about, about your profile. And then just filling this out, Wine Folly will take the information and they'll set, set up your a very um, basic site for you. It takes about one business day and then you'll get an email. Let me see if I can... Um, and that email will come from support at db.wine. And that will let you know that your profile is ready to, um, to finish. And you'll, uh, you'll be given a link to create an account on Wine Folly's global wine database. 
And when you go there, you'll um, they will have already uploaded some basic details based upon the information you sent them, including your website. So here's an example of Houston Vineyards, which has already been, um, I didn't give them a heads up that we were going to use them as a good example, but they've already been completing their profile. And so you'll see that it's it's uh, it looks terrific. It's a it's a great marketing tool to have as part of the wine region guide um, of Idaho's wine folly region guide. So they'll provide some basic information, and then you'll be prompted to share your story, help people understand and learn more of your brand. And the best part about it is it's dynamic. So if if you want to upload new photography over time. Um, you can certainly do that. If you have a new team members you want to share, that's all um, subject. It's all information that you can update as your winery um, grows. And one cool feature of your winery profile is they encourage you to share very specific information about your wines, about your vintage vintages. So you'll not only be prompted to provide tasting notes, and information about the vintage, but you'll be um, encouraged to add actual photography of your bottles. So uh, they recommend that you do your current vintages first. And then especially if, if you've been at this for a while, if you have past vintages um, and, and your new ones um, as they arrive. And once that's done, you can really sit back and, en and enjoy having this marvelous marketing tool um, on wine folly. And um, I should say that every Idaho winery will have a profile. Uh, our agency will take care of uploading the basic information um, about, about your site. But by claiming your profile, you will be prioritized when people search for Idaho wines. You'll be given a badge and you and you're you you rank higher in the sort. So it is important that you go ahead and, and take a few moments and they've made it super easy for you to um, create this great microsite. And then of course, when my, when the Idaho Region Guide launches on June 1st, you'll get to um, benefit from the tremendous, from the tremendous following that Wine Folly has. So uh, any questions? Um, regarding uh, this opportunity with Wine Folly. Yes, Susan, we have a couple that popped into the Q&A. Um, the first one is, will the Idaho region image be different from all of the other wine region images? The images you showed in your presentation all looked very similar, and I would hope we would want to stand out and draw in attention. So great question. The image is created by Wine Folly, they have won awards for their graphics. Um, I think, I hope I'm not, I, I think Madeline Puckett's partner is a graphic artist. So I think, <laughs> but anyway, and we will have our own, uh, we will have our own Idaho graphic. And that is, um, it's Wine Folly's site. So they create that. However, they base it on the unique history and, um, and information uh, about Idaho wines. So, well, when they're side by side, you, you definitely see a, a similar theme of colors and stuff. I, when you actually look at the different badges for each region, um, you do see what makes some of those regions unique. So we won't, um, we can certainly ask that it be, at, and I know that that's their intent to make it as unique as possible, um, but that is um, under their purview. Wonderful. And then the second question is, do you have data on how Wine Folly views translate into customer visits, online purchases, and wine club memberships, specifically for Walla Walla or Willamette Valley regions? I do not have that information, um, but it does bring up a great point. Uh, one of the options Idaho wineries have, will have, is that you can buy a pro account um, as part of the Wine Folly Global uh, Wine Database. And a pro account costs $400 a year. And with a pro account, you can sell directly to consumers um, from the Wine, Vol Wine Folly Database. That's my understanding. So, um, so 
I back to the question. So they wouldn't have information on sales for the basic profile or the or the um the, the microsite that's free. And they would have it then for those wineries that have a pro account. And I I'd be surprised if they shared that, but I will definitely ask and see what information they have because they must have um some sales tools for saying why this benefits wineries. So I'll follow up on that. Wonderful. Thank you, Susan. And then how does this Idaho region differentiate, differentiate itself from the USP? USP. Um, I'm not sure what's meant by USP. Me either. Whoever asked this question, can you let us know what USP is? And it could be something we could follow up with if we, if they're mm -hmm. not. Unique yeah. selling position. How does, so can you read the question one more time, Brenna? Yeah. How does, okay. how does this Idaho region differentiate itself? What's the unique selling position? Oh, okay. What's the unique selling position? So that's what we will be working with Wine Folly Um to create the region guide, we will be providing them with information about um, Idaho's history of winemaking, the land, the climate, weather. We actually provide them with weather data for 10 years and they are a wine education site. So um, their goal is to educate uh, wine consumers and wine enthusiasts. And so it's not necessarily that their goal is to sell wine, but we know that people buy wine based upon their um, how their understanding of the region and or their their interest is sparked based upon um, what they know about a particular wine region and the quality of its wines. And you've seen in Nolly's presentation the tremendous work that's been done in recent years to establish Idaho wines mm -hmm. as, um, as wines well worth the time for consumers to look to, to taste, to investigate, to visit the region. So by broadening, by being part of Wine Folly, Idaho now has dramatically expanded the, the awareness of its brand. So I would say it's more about awareness and knowledge and education than a unique selling position. I hope that answered the question. So then I just want to say you're doing awesome. And if anybody really has like specific questions too, more so like they can always send Susan or Nolly. I mean, they're full of information. So sorry to interrupt you, but this is just what I do like, right? Because I get excited about it, but. Can I add something in as well? And Susan touched on it at the beginning of her presentation as well, but knowing as the generations of wine consumers are everyone has a different way to gather information that to reiterate that like millennials and Gen Z people, like they want to do their research. They want to understand on their own. And again, this is the way that they want to do it. You know, I'm not just taking someone's word for it. I want to learn about it. And this is a deep dive and that you're going to provide that information that helps them do that in the way and in the place that they want to be finding out information about wine. Hey, Susan, I have another question for you. I think you talked about this at the beginning. Where do the wineries go to get the Wine Folly listing? Um, we will send you the URL. So there's a URL and at that URL, you'll provide some basic information and then Wine Folly will um, provide you with a, an account to log in and then you'll complete it from there. So. Susan, one more thing. Is there a deadline when all this should be submitted from the winery? There is no deadline, but we really encourage wineries to, to complete their profile before June 1st. Otherwise, they'll miss out on this tremendous launch that Wine Folly will do um, regarding the Idaho Region Guide. All right. Well, um, if there's no more questions, I think that concludes um, my portion of the presentation in Nollies. Looks like we have one more question. Um, I'm looking at winefolly.com and see nothing regarding Idaho wines. Oh, 
Okay, <laughs> sorry. And if I didn't make that clear, I'm sorry. Yes, so the Wyoming region, we're working on it right now with them. Um, we, we have a large amount of information that we'll be um, sharing with them by March 15th. We, the guide goes live on June 1st. So that's when you'll see the um, Idaho region guide on wine folly, June 1st, 2024. It has to be built. They don't want to put something up with no information on it, you guys. Like, so that's like, right. you have to go yeah. in and profile. It's like, it takes a little effort on the winery's part to put this up together. Right. So when when the Idaho Region Guide goes live on June 1st, that's also when every Idaho winery's profile will go live. So. And then just a comment from Melissa Kleeman, Cleland, this is huge and exciting. Well done. Thank you. Well, appreciate the vision of the Idaho Wine Commission staff. Um, we did a lot of research and we really checked out. We talked to other wine regions that have had done the guides and um, made sure that we knew that it was a great experience, but it was the vision of the Idaho Wine Commission staff that um, got us to this point. So. All right, I'll stop sharing my screen. And uh, thanks so very, very much for your time. We appreciate getting to be part of the Idaho Wine Commission's annual meeting. Thank you so much. Looks like we have one more question. Do you have time for one more? Absolutely, yeah. All right, this says, what percentage of winery profiles will you need in order to make a go, no-go decision on the June go-live date? The great news, uh, we've already made the go decision. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Wine Folly Region Guide for Idaho will happen no matter what. Um, this is, and so your um, microsite slash profile is it's purely optional, but um, Idaho is going to have an amazing region guide on Idaho on wine folly as of June first. The more wineries, though, that claim your profile, um, the more robust it will make the region guide, um, because the obvious next step after you've learned about Idaho wines and Idaho's climate and region and winemaking history is you're going to want to go check out the wineries. So. Um, yeah, so we hope every winery will claim their profile. And we could send information like out to them, right, Nolly and Susan, just in emails and things like that. So we can. Yeah, we can actually send those slides if if that's easy. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah totally. Well, wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Nolly and Susan. It's always uh, wonderful to have you guys speak and we have a great partnership and it's wonderful to work with you both pers on a personal level. So uh, we're going to take a quick coffee break and come back at 1115. And please say hi tomorrow. My colleague, John Curtis, and I will be at the reception tomorrow afternoon. So would love to meet any and all of you in person. I know we've met a lot of you in person already. So have a great rest of your meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Nolly and Susan.